Hi, I'm Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it, let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world, and I'm just giving my two cents on When things get messy, it get messy. When Kendrick Lamar was on a break from his uh, fiance, he was, you know, in a basically relationship with this artist, Nikki Scott, Nitty Scott, the MC. And she's straight out of New York, you know, doing her thing. And Kendrick and her were kicking it. So, this before he went back to his girl, you know, her label didn't think it was a good idea that Kendrick was a bad look for her career. Can you believe that? Seriously, they actually thought Kendrick Lamar would be a bad look for Nitty. That's ridiculous. But... You never know how these managers think about somebody's career that this is a bad look for her career. And she couldn't really talk about the relationship for a while. You know, and they split up. They still cool. They still follow each other to this day. Uh, and allegedly, Drake was trying to find her. So I don't know when he was trying to find her. I don't know if he's trying to find her today or yesterday or the day before but drizzy drake was trying to get a hold of nitty scott i guess to try to find dirt on kendrick lamar and was you know implying that they're trying to find some information on him so i i have no idea about anything other than that you know so when the news come to me i just report it to y'all that's my job. And if you look at like Nitty Scott, like she is an Afro Latina, um, very voluptuous woman. And she is someone that is, doesn't really show her body though. She doesn't. She normally keeps her body, you know, covered up with her t-shirts and everything so don't nobody really too much know you know what she's working with she don't really put that out there to the world so when you saw her go out into the world and tell everybody about her and Kendrick you know this um, became a situation that um, went back to the uh, the actual masses of the people and this didn't make a lot of um, sense to the record label and the people that didn't want her to speak to Kendrick Lamar things started to turn for the worse because they started to act strange when they were together you know and it wasn't that you know, because she did shows in L.A., uh, Cali, Sprite Fest, you know, it's, it was very common for her to do these shows. So it wasn't uncommon for her to be in a situation where it would be uncomfortable for her to be around Kendrick Lamar in a setting. Like, they were MCs, like, they rapped together. A lot of people was like, oh, you know, she didn't want people to to really say, okay, well, Kendrick Lamar is writing all your raps. She didn't want that. You know, uh, that label. So they kind of kept the situation private and discreet. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. When you date someone from high school, y'all might have breakups. 
Y'all get back together. So the, it wasn't like, oh, he's cheating on his wife. They've been together since high school. Yeah, they was dating since high school. They break up. You get back together. That's the gist of it. You know, that's how it goes sometimes. But, you know, this was years later. You know, he ended up proposing to his uh, fiance. And then whatever happens there, happens there. But the fact that Drake is trying to scumbag his way back into the fold doesn't surprise me in trying this approach. I mean... When you're in a rap battle, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Get the information. But I think Drake was probably trying to get a little bit more than information. Drake is known as a dirty, low-down dog when it comes to these women. <laughs> Anyhow, so it's no surprise when you hear his name and all this uckery that you, <laughs> that you hear it about. So... I mean, you in a rap battle. You gonna try to get the information anywhere you could. But this is what Kendrick was talking about. The money you put in the street. It came back with no receipts. He's sorry he lives a boring life. And there was nothing that she could even tell you anyway. I mean, that you could use in a rap battle because... She wasn't going to do that anyway. She's cool with Kendrick. She loves Kendrick. She got love for Kendrick. Period. She don't really rock with you at all. And, you know, I just don't think you have a play there. You know, because I'm thinking, uh, in my opinion, that now she's, you know, she was bisexual, but I think she's probably in a relationship with a woman now, you know, so I don't know, you know, I can't speak for other people, but, and what they would do, but her energy and vibe wouldn't, doesn't seem like the type that would go for Drake's shenanigans, because she's not just some Instagram thought, you know, she's actually, uh, a musician, a female rapper herself, and um, and she's a model. So, I mean, I just don't see the success working for him. So, you know, other people have plans, ideas, and thoughts about it, but not me. You know, it's just something typical that's... Uh, out of the norm that people are enamored by. It's a shame, though, you know. She's not known for her artistry. We might have to go more into detail on the Patreon, but I might do it here, you know, while, we, while we're here. And then uh, you can go to the Patreon and take out, you know, we got a lot of surprises over there. So I'm not even going to tell you what's there. You just go take a look. If you see something you like, you get involved. <laughs> so let's listen to what she had to say about her relationship with Kendrick Lamar. Was it real? Was it, you know, just something that was a part of somebody's imagination or she took things too far or ran into it wrong? Let's hear what she had to say. Rumor on the streets is that you used to date Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> da, da. Um, and Ooh, bombshell. You know, I've been hearing this for a while, and I wasn't gonna bring it into the interview. You've been because hearing I knew this for a while. Yeah. Yo, Ebro's in these streets. I mean, I heard it too, uh, Nitty. You heard it too. Oh my god. So, I mean, listen, amazing, great relationship. Y'all look great together. But I heard it was like before Section Eighty. Like this is years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was actually. Um, so shout out to Kendrick, that's the homie. Um, yeah, we had we had a brief thing. Oh, okay. Um, so it wasn't like a long term relationship. It and I, the way I heard it was like, yo, you know, she used to fuck with Kendrick. <laughs> it wasn't like, yo, you were his like. I'll put it like like I I'll say like that was that was my boo. You know what I'm saying? Like that was my thing. I was seeing him and him only for at least a year. Oh, so you guys were in a cute. relationship. That's, that's a thing. That's a like, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was a thing. And you guys are still cool. Yeah, that's still that is still the homie. Um yeah, it honestly, I can't even say that uh 
Okay, let me pick them. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> let me Move let me pick slow, and choose Nitty. what pick it is I want to reveal here. My just pick nice and easy. Which I'll, just, one? <laughs> I'll just put it like this. Um, you know, the people that were in charge of my career um, in the past, that was a relationship that they were not comfortable with. Um, and I think that's out of pocket already, simply because I don't think your personal relationships should be... Uh, you know, determined by um, people who you're involved with professionally. But that is what really um, made it so that it couldn't flourish. Um, just because I was basically told that that was not a good look for. Oh, yeah. Good, good call career. on that one. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to be associated with who, Kendrick? Who? who are these people that were managing you? Yo, yeah, nah, nah, yeah nah, I'm nah. not. Yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. All, I'm not listen, here to throw anything under the bus. Listen, but it's, it's, it's probably <laughs> all a blessing, right? It's it probably is. all a blessing. We're in now. We're having a conversation. I had no idea what I was walking to. I thought it was like, I was just going to throw it out there because, you know, me, I'm loose sometimes. And I heard you fuck with Kendrick. So I was like, oh, you said Yeah, no, that was that I had was no bad. idea we was going to get into a whole thing. Um, Let's get to these bars, though. Uh, Let the bars drop it. It's the queen of the cosmos, cream of the convo, the wavy Buddha baby, get your lady a poncho. Hit you with the dawn fo, the two-piece convo, and Rafa Eric Garner, we ain't fucking with 5-0. Her bright being inhaling these God particles, while these niggas whine like Jamaicans up at the carnival. Uninhibited in habitats to be had, you just pack a lot of racket with an act to be mad. Young, black, and gifted, and no gas, I'm lifted. Know that I'm crafty when I crack the cryptics. Where are the pickets? I picks on the bigots, and why when you kick it, all I hear. His crickets have been true. Pen game tend to offend who fronting on a camera just like pretends do. I was rocking venues I couldn't get into. 19, right? Never guess what I've been through. You missing the old me, so listen to old me. Refuse to let the motherfucking masses control me. Used to love the caterpillar, now you hate the butterfly. Fronting on my catalog like I don't keep it gutter. Why? Fuck it, I recover. Suckers hugger in another lie. I just keep it gutter like a rubber in your mother's eye. <laughs> no. Now, the word got back to me that Drake slid in the DMs and was asking questions. Um, I don't know how true it is, but, you know, I just said, well, let me report it and I'll just tell it to y'all. They said, Drake slid in the DMs, doesn't say when. Um, like, this could have been today, tomorrow, yesterday. A month ago when it first dropped. <laughs> we don't know. It's been that quick. Not like us dropped and everybody's ready for for him to perform it live. And the song been out a month. Hold having a stranglehold on like the number one. Hell, I still play it. Soon as I get in my car, my car automatically. Psst, I see dead people. <laughs> and I just think like, damn, Drake career is over. That's where that's where my mind goes every time I hear that song. Every time I hear the beat drop, every time I hear anything revolving around that song, that pops up. I have a hard time trying to explain to people my thought process when it comes around to this. You know, one guy was a scumbag and another guy was was righteous. And I chose the guy that was righteous and everybody's mad at me like I chose the scumbag. Like, why you didn't choose the scumbag? You're a fan of the scumbag. I'm like, I like the songs that he made. But when somebody do a lot of scumbag activity and you just try to ignore it because you're addicted to celebrity and can't separate scumbag from, you know, the actual moment. When Pusha T was being a scumbag, I thought, and a hater, I called it out. 
I said, push your teeth being a hater. He has no reason for this beef. This whole beef is on jealousy. And to me, that's weak. Jealousy is a weak emotion. You just feel like I'm a better rapper than this guy. Going on nose candy. Ugh. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're not better at this than Drake. You're not. After listening to Kendrick Lamar, you know Pusha T don't even belong in this conversation. Drake and Kendrick are better than him. He might not want to hear that, but it is true. Was it wrong to bring up the situation with the, the girl? You know, Drake. This is, you know, the, the route he was going. Because we know the girl that you actually like. We know the girl that you have in your life. <laughs> so this is what he wanted to go down. He wanted to go down this road. So if Drake can get her on his arm, he think that would help him win. But no, it wouldn't. It would just make it worse. It would make it look bad on her, and it would look worse on you. You would just be the scumbag that they talking about. And then he's like, see, we don't trust you. So, you know, you solidify that statement when you do crap like that. You know, like, I'm going to just go take his girl now. That stuff, it looks corny. Because then it looks forced, and it looks like she's doing something for a look. But... Allegedly, she kept it real and, you know, basically didn't return the DM messages, curved it and, you know, told Kendrick like, oh, he's trying to get information or his team is trying to get information from me. But like, I ain't going, you know, I'm not even responding to that. Got nothing to do with it. Stand out. But she's loyal. You see? Loyalty. Drake has a hard time with that. He has a hard time maintaining people who are loyal. So he has to buy it. He doesn't know genuine loyalty. He's like, well, I guess I got to buy the loyalty. Everybody's around him is around him for the money. So... You know, that's what it is. And that's it. That's all. I'm not going to make this a long video. It doesn't need to be long. It's short. If I find any more information, or if it comes by me, if it's good enough for me to make a video, I will. But June 19th is the end of Drake's career. So... It was a nice run, buddy. You had a, a long run. But now, Kendrick is back home. He's back in charge. So you can just give him the keys. <laughs> and uh, you can step off to the side. Go back to Toronto or wherever you chose choose to live today. Go there. Anyway, I'm out. It's your boy Carcino saying shouts out to... The Kwame Brown Bus Life, the dream is proved. Welcome to HDII TV, Jack Sports and Jose Rodriguez. And we go deuces. <laughs>